to another episode of the Stellar Sound Podcast, the only podcast relatively unknown to Earthlings but rocking it on all the interdimension space traveling radars to empower creative musicians everywhere. I'm your host, Leandri Paulson, and today I'm joined by the one, the only, Kina. But first, to become part of our interstellar presence, find us at stellarsoundpodcast.com on all social platforms at Stellar Sound Podcast or join our astronauts in the Stellar Sound Discord community. Links are in the description. Kina is a drummer turned DJ that has an avid passion for all things music. As a true South African at heart, his motto is to inspire his audience to move all the while bringing new and unknown musics to the forefront with its minimalist tech and rhythmic dance music. You can find Kina performing live sets in Portrait Room and Joburg. Kina, welcome to the Stella Megiddon and how are you today? I am all good and with you? I'm doing great. It's nice and sunny in the Netherlands at the moment. The sun only sets, I think, at nine o'clock. It's amazing. So, you know, we're living that day life currently. Well, you but definitely let's start this off. Weather this side, the bad weather is this side. <laughs> Why did you have to do that? No, 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 there's, there's no way possible. I, I am as pale as a vampire for a reason, because I don't see the sun. And when the sun shines until nine o'clock at night, I just want to die. Well, I blame um, you, so. <laughs> I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. Um, I want to start uh, with your humble musical beginnings, to put mm. it that way. You <laughs> started your music journey as a drummer so i'm really curious as to when at what point did you start transitioning from drumming to djing so uh i played drums for about 12 years before i started djing and i've only been djing now for about six to seven months so it, it's relatively new wow um and i think I'd, i've always had a, a love for the electronic dance music community i always have and probably always will, but I never really got into it because of the drumming. And then when Corona happened, uh, we were booked for 2020, me and my band, I was in a band with two other singers and we were booked for about six to seven festivals, uh, which was big for us. Wow. We were finally climbing the ladder. And then obviously Corona happened. And uh, after about in South Africa, it was about a good year and a half, two years before we could actually have live shows again. Um, Cause we tried and it just didn't work out. And then after that long time, the, the singers, they had at that point had graduated. They wanted to move on. Um, they both moved to different cities. So that just didn't happen. And I, I don't think I touched the drum set in a good year, year and a half, maybe even two. Oh, wow. Uh, and it was sitting right next to me. Um, so it was a bit of a... <laughs> it, it was staring at you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It was a bit of a downer. Um, but I didn't want to pick it up and then I can't perform because because i love playing Play. it mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I love playing it in general but obviously the the point of mm. learning something is to be able to share it with someone so i just didn't touch it and then i realized that i probably wouldn't drum for a very long time and when things slowly started opening up um i remember going to this bar and like a rock bar a texas rock bar and there was a DJ up and I never expected it and he was playing and I kind of was enjoying it, whatever. And it, I don't know what it was, but something just told me, okay, listen, you need to go, you need to go up and you need to ask him to teach you. And I remember t turning to my girlfriend at the time and being like, I need to go up there. She's like, no man, he's working. Why do you want to? And I was like, okay, okay. Fair enough. Voice of reason. Woman is always right. Okay. I get you. Cool. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Don't quote me on that. Um, and I, I just sat there and then I turned to her again and I said, listen, um, I really, really need to go up there. So I did. I walked up to him and um, I just said, hey, listen, I want to learn how to DJ. And he said, okay, well, when are you free? Oh, well, next Thursday. Okay, cool. Next Thursday. So I had a session with uh, Lee. And this man called the vet or DJ get loud as he's known. Then we had a second session. <laughs> we had a second session uh, a week afterwards. And he said to me, listen, there isn't much else that I can teach you. Um, because of the drumming background, I had the beat matching already. So it was quite easy for me to, uh, to catch on to it. And he said, well, I can't teach you anything. So do you want to open for me at one of my gigs tonight? And I was like, well, yeah. 
and then from there just That's kind amazing. of amazing jeez just, just kind of built mm. um so it was very it was very coincidental i'm very glad that it did happen um but mm. i never expected it at all as how it did but i wouldn't change it for anything that's very, it's, it's, it's quite um, strange to see that transition because if you think about like origin stories, like Superman origin stories, uh, but in the sense of DJing, let's say like uh, Martin Garrix and those mm -hmm. young DJs, they usually start at, at like school proms and, yeah. and and very young age and also they're just like at random weddings and then one day they wake up and they're playing at Tomorrowland or whatever. So it's it's so coincidence it's like it's meant to be you put it out into the universe and it happened uh mm. your journey through djing but it's also it's, i find it very interesting when we speak about musicians that start off in once one area or one um i want to say niche of music and then they transition to another and they just pick it up so fast um i've happens. spoken to musicians before that start as I don't know, guitarists. And then one day they just try the piano and they like insanely talented. So you went from, you didn't even know what you want to do with your drumming and your bands to being a regular well, DJ at a uh, Texas bar, right? Not only there, but, but I resident there, I would say. So. Um, you, but I want to go into, there's this meme online and I was looking for it earlier to to screen share it with you, but I just couldn't find it. I'm so glad it. you're doing meme references. <laughs> <laughs> that is a stupid one though. <laughs> but it's that it's that stupid okay. one where, where the girl, she's wasted out of her mind. And she goes up to the DJ booth and she's trying to like, just order shots or something, but she's at the DJ, the booth. DJ booth. And it's one of the, it's, and it's one of those, it's open. So, you know, you can just rock up right into the, the DJ's yeah. face. So I want mm -hmm. to know, <laughs> I want to hear some drunk stories, <laughs> drunk patron stories. What's the best, oh, not the best. I shouldn't say that way. Tell us about drunk requests and the challenges of DJing <laughs> at two o'clock in the morning in a club, everyone's wasted. And you know, just random people coming up to you being like, yo, play the song. You can play the song, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you the story first and then I'll give you my very unpopular opinion on requests. <laughs> So okay. I think it, I was early on, it was, I was about two months into DJing and, uh, I was playing a gig and we used sort of like a, like a, a metal rig as a DJ stand. Um, so that it's quite portable, okay. but it's, it's not, it's stable obviously, but it's not, it's not like you can, you know, hang on it type of thing. And I'm busy playing and I was actually enjoying myself like for the first time in a very long time when it came to DJing for drunk people at that point. And <laughs> yeah. this guy walked past and he was holding two drinks and double he was it. <laughs> definitely not on the sober side. And I don't know what happened, but I think he tripped over one of, I don't, I don't think it was one of my cables. I don't think so. Um, but he tripped and he fell sort of, he was walking past me like this and then he fell this way, but then somehow turned his back onto me. So then he hit the stage, the stage <laughs> fell on top of me and the jinx flew up into my face as well. So <laughs> I ended up having to catch, <laughs> I ended up having to catch the, 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 the desk and the stage with my DJ deck on it. Plus the laptop. <laughs> so I had to put my leg out and lift it up to stop the laptop from sliding off the stage. Yeah. Um, and then I just sort of held it there. And then there was the whiplash of the alcohol. So I just caught it stood still and then I had brandy in my face. Um, and then later that guy ended up trying to walk out of the bar and fell down the stairs and it, it was, yeah, it was lots of, okay. lots of fun and events. So I, the, he I was guess, the MVP of the I night. Guess, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I wasn't very happy with him, um, but he did come the next day and apologize and, at least. So um, it does, uh, it does get quite crazy. <laughs> I have a personal opinion. I uh, people are going to hate me for this, but who? who oh, whoever, I, I agree. I agree already. But just go. Uh, that it was a tell me why. Request, something <laughs> from a DJ should have been shot. He should have just told like tone it down. Don't make it mainstream. Because um, I have no problem playing music that you love. That's my job. My job is to is to play things that you love and to play music that I love, and obviously for us experience that together. But mm, I'm mm. also not a human jukebox. 
and I'm also not an aux cable. I I I fed myself, oh, and um, that is a good example. Thank you. Yeah. I, I I take time out of my day before a set to go work out what I'm gonna play, what's gonna fit for the people I'm playing for, the venue, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I don't do that and then come and be like, okay, well, now I need to play everyone else's song. Um, the other thing for me is if you have a request and it fits with what I'm playing and if I have it or if I can get it, I will gladly play it. If, it, if it's music that I love or music that I was like, oh, I should have put that song on, which I've done before, then I'll gladly play it. But for example, two nights ago, I was playing and this guy came up to me and I was playing, obviously, Techno in House. And he came up to me and he said, hey, can you play Mr. Brightside? Now, an amazing song by The Killers. Amazing. And I love it. In my own capacity, that's on repeat. <laughs> Not on a, in a club setting, though. You know. Exactly. And I don't know. <laughs> I think people, don't, people, people don't understand BPM. They don't understand that I still have to mix in the melodic scale. I have to know my scales as well, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I just looked at him and I was like, unfortunately, I can't play it right now. And he's like, oh, don't you have it? I'm like, no, of course I have it, but I can't play it right now. And he's like, why? And I didn't want to explain to him. So I just said, listen, I can't. But I was at 128 and I think Mr. Brassad is 146 and it just wouldn't work out. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, um... I want to throw back to when we were talking about collaborations, mm. if you had like a dream collaboration, anyone in the world, any artist, any person, any vocalist, any instrumentalist, anyone, what would your dream collaboration be? Okay. So we're talking dreams. So it's allowed to be someone who's passed, correct? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, you can get comfortable in your seat. This list is going to be very long. So number one, <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. number one, uh, <laughs> My absolute idol, Michael Jackson. Um, I, uh, I've I, noticed a lot of these stuff in your music. Uh, definitely. Well, okay, makes sense. <laughs> so a bit of a side note. Um, I've Anything creative, I've probably tried it out. So before I was a drummer, I was a dancer. And I've done photography and I've done videography and I've done painting and, and acting and everything. So for me, um, from the dancing background, Michael Jackson was definitely up there. And not only in the dancing background, like that's how I found him, but musically, I think that, that he was more gifted than anyone that I think would come across. You know, we don't know what Missy's going to do, but I don't think we'll ever get someone who was as influential or as musically talented and in tune than Michael Jackson was, in my opinion. Um, the, mm. the drum patterns, for example, obviously, that's the first. Here's my sounds. Here's my samples. <laughs> you do it. This thing I listen to. Um, is insane and I know that he, he, he wasn't just the singer he was also the producer and he was also the conductor so definitely I, I, I kind of <laughs> would just say you know what he, um, so definitely Michael you take Jackson. them make magic yeah, definitely <laughs> yeah. um, producers I would love to work with Pharrell uh, Pharrell Williams would love to I'd absolutely yeah. love to work with him I also think he's amazing great, great producer mm -hmm. yeah uh, Labyrinth as well. The music that he's re releasing nowadays is revolutionary. Oh. Um, so if you think about what you want to achieve, if we can repeat this interview or this conversation in, let's say, 15 years, where okay. would you want to be in your musical journey, if you will? Okay. Well, so part of that, uh, part of the plan is uh, also collaborations. So a little bit um, collaborations that would possibly happen or that are able to happen. Um, definitely Black Coffee. I am so proud of him for winning a Grammy um, the other day. Like I, I feel like, like, like I saw him grow as a musician for, as a kid. So, so seeing that, that he, he got a Grammy for Africa, uh, it was pretty cool. Um, so definitely if I could, he is an industry giant, I'm aware, but it is still a South African. So if I could ever collab with him, that'd be amazing. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Mikasa, but it's a South African band. They sort of make Afrotech Afro house. Definitely should check them out. Oh, no. Um, I've never heard of them. The singer, his name is, or his stage name is J something. Uh, I didn't forget his name. Like it's J something. Um, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> That's actually the whole trick. That's unique. Name. But anyway, uh, also an amazing singer, and I'd, I've met him a few times. To, a few times, I'd love to work with him too. Um, mm. So 
besides for the collaborations, I think that I'd love to start playing a lot more festivals. I think that mm. I definitely could suit the festival scene. Um, so I, I do think I can fit into the festival scene very well. So the idea is hopefully if everything goes well, um, I'd like to at least play a side stage at Ultra next year or the year after. Next year. Yeah. That's a, that's a, I don't want to diminish your goals or I anything, know, but that's a big goal. I know it's have... big. I know it's big and I know it's far fetched, but as I know myself, I need to definitely reach um, in order to get there because if I give myself a certain time, I'm going to try my absolute best to do it then. So I've told myself it probably mm -hmm. will happen anywhere between next year to two years, three years time. Um, but I want to work hard enough that if Ultra comes around and um, I'm either offered it or I've furthered my career mm. to a point where the fact that I don't play there would not be that I didn't work hard enough. Um, but that takes me to a little weird tangent or weird crossover to music education because as you said most of these musicians are doing other things and doing music as well um and you were a student mm -hmm. um when you transitioned into djing and now you said that's a full-time job at this yeah, stage it is. um was it a struggle to balance your academic career and your djing career and that's essentially why you leaned over more to the DJing career than the academic career? Not, not really. Um, I didn't, I didn't DJ for very long while I was still studying. I think, mm -hmm. I think I stopped. Um, so I say I started DJing in October, but I messed around a little bit for a month before that, I guess, uh, I would just say I actually started and started giving it my all in October. So in September I was still. I was still studying and it was it wasn't long I think it was about a month two months and then I gave up the the studies um so when I had to it wasn't that difficult though because the nice thing about DJing is that you can manage it nicely because all of your gigs are nights unless you're a wedding DJ or any or a day festival or whatever so I mm. could just manage it by getting up early and um doing all my academics getting that out of the way have that done by five get in the car go to the gig um, so it wasn't that difficult for me. I do think that it would have definitely gotten more difficult as I progressed in the years. Um, but it was, it wasn't difficult to manage at that time. So. And, and balancing, let's forget about the academics and, um, I want to say your day life and your night life. Let's just think about the, the night life, knowing that you have to have a set ready every night. Um, and you have a, a, I want to say, responsibility to entertain because that is what um, your job is essentially. How do you deal with that, especially with someone that struggles with ADHD and anxiety? Because there is a lot of pressure just for the everyday person, but for those that do struggle with ADHD and anxiety, it's just, it's so much more. So how do you, I want to say, cope with it, with the pressures of creating something new every night? So uh, just just a little bit of a tangent. Um, I call myself a triple threat because, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, I have anxiety and ADHD, but I've also been diagnosed mm -hmm. with uh, clinical depression as well. So I'm a whole oh shit I'm man a whole package. I've got triple threat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you are the triple threat. Yeah, you, that well described. <laughs> um, so having everything. Luckily, I am at a place right now when where I I wouldn't say I have it fully under control. I think it's something that you have to live with every day when it comes to mental disorders in general. Um, mm. So I'm at a place where I'm mentally okay. I'm okay. I really am. And um, obviously it's quite liberating it's to, to, to be able to say that. Thank you. Um, yeah. But I am at a point where I wasn't. I definitely, when I started, it was extremely difficult um, to balance everything to, to with the pressures. But I, I've I've coached myself and and I've gone to see different psychologists, psychiatrists, and and all those type of things to get my mind sorted so that it doesn't affect me in the way that it did. And how it did affect me was uh, I used to have to take mood stabilizers or anxiety pills before every every gig, and luckily I wasn't doing it every day. Um, 
but definitely not in overdose way, like the normal dose and, and whatever. But of course, that, that starts affecting your your social life as well and your private life too. So it definitely was a yeah, struggle. Yeah, of course, of course. It definitely was a struggle. But as I said, right now, I've got everything uh, under control. I also... Pref- under control, yeah, balancing everything. Before I go up on stage, um, I kind of prep myself too. And that helps a lot to sort of be like, okay, well... There is a lot of people, for example, if it's a big gig, um, this is so-and-so. I kind of just speak myself into, okay, you're going to go do this now. Your goal for this set is to do this. Your goal for um, for the night or the feeling that people must get must this. And the energy that uh, would best suit how you feel right now versus what you want to give the people as well is going to work out as this. So it, it takes a lot of mental coaching and training to get there, but I don't think it's impossible because I've been doing it. So I like I like how you mentioned before, you said how you have to coach yourself through it mentally. And um, I wanted to talk about this a lot because when we think it, when we think about the techno and the dance in the house scene, it is considered a party on steroids. I mean, if you look at the amazing things that come from Tomorrowland or Ultra, it is quite innovative, the artistic side of it, but there's also a very dark side of it mm-hmm. where it's, not just with the audience members, but with the actual DJs themselves. Mm-hmm. And as a DJ, I imagine that you have to be up and on it the entire time, because if you show a bad mood, your audience is going to have a bad mood. And we've seen, unfortunately, DJs uh, such as Avicii that had to re- resolve to having a drink or two before going up and doing a set or having a, or to take anxiety medication himself as well. And in the end, I mean, it just went bad for him. Obviously he passed away. You can also add into so, my collaboration list, by the way, also a huge, huge fan. But anyway, amazing. Mm-hmm. Is it, but if you, if you don't consider, if you take yourself out of the picture, if you consider other DJs that you've spoken to or worked with, is this a common denominated with all DJs that you guys do struggle to uh, hype yourself up before a set um, and that you r- relate to, I don't want to say substance abuse, but to coping methods to get there? Or is it possible to just rock up and rock out, I want to say? So showing up and rocking out is is something that you get used to as a DJ and as a performer, I think, um, it, you kind of have to, it's, it's part of your job. It's, it's, you, you, you have to do that. There's, there's no other way, unfortunately. Um, I have, I do have DJ friends that have canceled gigs because they just weren't in a great mental space. And I do think that if anyone has to feel like that as a performer and you really feel like you won't be able to give your all, then cancel it. But there are also times yeah. me and my, other friends and DJ friends or whatever that, or musician friends, there, there are times where in the middle of a set, you just don't want to do it anymore. Not, not exactly. There's no trigger. There's no, well, there normally mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. but there can be times where there isn't where you, you're just like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this right now. It's not that I, I don't love playing the music that I'm playing. It's just, that I don't want to do this right now. And unfortunately, yeah. as I said, it is your job. You kind of have to just pick yourself up. Um, I personally have certain methods, like as in um, just appreciate how people are, are moving to the music or uh, anything like that to sort of put you back in the mood. But it still takes work. And mm-hmm. I know some people that have also actually got a call once from a guy saying, listen, I'm playing this gig. I've got about an hour left, but I really can't do it. Could you just come and watch the decks for me? And I've done it for him. And um, mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. took a few minutes mm-hmm. and he was cool. So it, it is it is the hidden part of the industry that you don't see because all you see is someone up on the stage, you know, going crazy and enjoying himself. Where obviously everyone exactly everyone wants to see exactly, it, but you don't see afterwards. Um, I I for ex- how draining it is exactly. I, I for example played um, I played an event called Pachella here in Poch in uh, at Impala, and yes, I know I know still it from Coachella, but leave us be, leave us be. Um, a good friend of mine organized it and and I played for him and then after playing my set I had to just go to a quiet side of of one of the bars close to where we were and I just had to sit there for two hours because I was saying to my friends it it feels like my ears are bleeding obviously they weren't but Mm. it gets to the point where where the emotion the excitement the, the serotonin dopamine 
um, all of that plus the sound gets to the point where you you don't know what to do anymore. You have to sit there quietly for two hours and not speak to anyone and just sit there um, and also fight the urge to not go into an energy dip and then a mental dip as well. Mm. So exactly. as I said, it is a very it is a very hidden part of the, the industry which we don't show often. Um, but luckily, it is something that we do talk about. Uh, any DJ that I meet, it's definitely something that comes up in every conversation because it's pertinent to all of us. So, and musicians, musicians seem normally they're pretty friendly. So, if if there's anyone that ever has a problem, um, there's always someone who understands that they'll be able to reach out to. And uh, I haven't really, I luckily haven't experienced anything uh, Avicii like, uh, for lack of better words, um, anywhere with my close friends. And I hope that never happens. But I do hope that if anything like that gets to that point, that people do reach out as musicians because it is something we all go through. Yeah. But it's interesting because we keep talking about the negative side of, let's say, the music industry or the the, the negative effect on mental health in the music industry and also on DJs in particular. But what about this lifestyle really, I'm going to say, picks you up in the day? How does it create... What... I should put it in the way that why, how does it in, how does it improve your mental health? That's the proper wording. So I, I've spoken a lot about the negative effects and I, and I think um, sometimes we dwell on that a bit too much. But I, I must tell you that even though it does get tiring, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world because getting up on stage, uh, luckily I'm very used to being on stage, but getting up there and seeing seeing the smiles on people's faces and seeing people just bob their head along or just, a, a job comes along and you get that one guy with like the stanky face like mm. like even that it, it i've had such bad days really horrible days and um i just got up on stage and then some guy comes up to me and listen to your music is amazing or listen you 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 gave me a, a crazy thought during your music like your music carried me away or whatever whatever it might be um i think that's key to an artist as well is doing what you love as i said because then if you are playing music or making music that you love, then people will automatically love it back, in my opinion. And in doing mm. so, you, you also stir up and change people's minds when it comes to a lot of things. Um, so just just getting appreciation from, from fans and from people who come and listen to my music and things like that. Or people, I've even had people at the moment DM me and uh, I, I had I had my first celebrity moment last week where a little a little freshman or first year whatever you want to call him came up to me and he and he did this and then um, I also was having a bad day this day as well and he did this and I was like oh yeah you can give me the phone I'll I'll, I'll take a photo of you and he was like no like I want a photo with you and I was like oh okay yeah cool um, stop <laughs> I just trying to it. keep it together like oh um, <laughs> but <laughs> oh yeah. Just, just, that's, I'm sorry. That's amazing. <laughs> I really didn't expect it. I really didn't. It's never happened before, um, and it's not getting to the point where 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 people are they're asking me to come play at their birthday parties or like I actually got an invite today for Grandma's 60th, which I'm so so game to play house for. Um, so stoked to play for 60th. It's gonna birthday be great. Party. It's gonna be great. Um, uh, okay. I want to move on to a little bit of my stalking obsession oh, that I have. I'm going to be locked up one of these days. Honestly, I've said so much on this show how much I stalk people online. And it's, it's I swear it's not on a criminal level. It's very lighthearted. But as is, I went through your social media pages. So and I looked up your life story. I'm so, so scared. And I stole a couple of photos. <laughs> Don't be, it's safe. I swear it's safe. Um... Just for everyone uh, listening, if you want to come see the photos with us, head on over to the Stella Sound, uh, Stella Sound Podcast YouTube page or join the Discord Discord community to have a look with us. Uh, what's interesting is while I attempt to screen share these photos is you said yourself you are somewhat of a renaissance, renaissance man and you were into acting mm -hmm. and photography mm -hmm. and art. And when I look at your pictures or your photos, I can honestly like see it because it's very stylized, except for the family, the family yeah. tags, of course, we can't all be responsible for our parents tagging us in photos, but your own shares are very, I'm going to label it 
artistic. It's very artistic and very on it's, like he did it on purpose. It sounds so silly to put it that way, but it's uh, yeah. Not, they just uh, we leave it not, at that. I, I didn't really. <laughs> it's not. It's not like I brewed over a photo before I posted it or anything like that. It's just I, I think that I also grew up in a very artistic family too, and mm. having the eye for, for example, the photography or for for good art or art that. Um, that I appreciate whatever I've, I've always loved shapes and visuals and, and that type of thing and I love putting visuals up in a DJ too where so the, the art stuff comes in too mm. um, so I, I guess it's just you know for example that photo it's part of that that photo <laughs> for me fully encompanies that moment because that was at a music sorry I'm jumping the gun here but that was at a music festival for my school yeah no no go ahead um, Tell us. I was like, you look very different. You look much younger, to be honest. But tell us about, about this photo while I you're at it. I was 17 at that point, I think. And um, this was for my school. So my school has a music festival and um, quite a big one too. And we invite three to four artists every year. And then they come and they sing with us. And then the highlight of the entire show is we get 1,600 boys in the school all up on the stage. And then they sing a song with each of the artists. Um, at which oh, wow. it, for, so if you had to pan the camera a little bit more this way then you would see a thousand six hundred faces <laughs> looking at you um sorry that way for you wow um, and <laughs> so to hear that sound coming from you um it was also it, it was insane and then i think the photo i think why i chose this one was because it, the, the the spotlight is straight on my head and when you're playing music for me uh, I don't know if you've seen the music Soul, uh, the the movie Soul. Sorry, mm -hmm. um, where yeah. he goes into into that space where, where where when he plays music. I honestly feel like that whenever me and music are in the same room, and it does really feel like the spotlight is on you. It's like you become the main character type of thing, your own little bubble. Yeah. Um, so I guess I, I like to I like to post photos that are moments and moments that are captured perfectly by the photograph. Would definitely that's one of them. That's amazing photo. Um, it, it's it's truly like you say. It's like a honestly a little halo mm -hmm. shining down on you. But it's uh, yeah, it feels it truly for everyone that's not musicians listening. It really it does feel that way when you are in the moment. You feel like you're in your own little bubble, and you suddenly have become the main yeah. character. Um, oh wait, I clicked on the wrong thing. There we go. There we are. Oh, still not. Jeez, oh, I am the best technician <laughs> in this room right now. So just bear with me. Uh, I, deck, I could help you. Sorry, it, I can't do anything now. Uh, it's just my idiot idiocy, honestly. Okay, I love this photo. I have strong feelings about this photo. Let me just tell you. Obviously, you are very important in it. Let's not take away your praise in the photo, but the Please background just me. gives me real strong. <laughs> it gives me such Lion King vibes. <laughs> Mufasa in the clouds, Simba down, Rafiki. But I can't even describe it. I saw this photo. I'm like, save. Done. So, <laughs> Let's talk about this photo. Where is this taken so, and what uh, happened? In South Africa, obviously, uh, you, you would definitely know. Uh, we have a, a very big, a very big Afrikaans culture. And uh, one of my, one of my boo friends, or former friends, as you want to call them, um, he, uh, she actually invited me to, uh, in the, at the top of South Africa, close to, close to Limpopo, round about there. And, um, we, we left the main road and then we drove for another two hours in into the bush um and we basically what we call it is a blast or like like a farm party type of thing it sounds it sounds worse in english a hoe down uh, yeah yeah i guess so uh, yeah it's a it's a hoe down um, <laughs> and this was about just just after the music started dying down at about three four in the morning which was very early um and we did we decided to go for a bit of a drive and we we this is what the stars look like obviously cameras you have to have a really good camera in order to capture it and then my friend remembered oh wait i have i have my camera here so he ran back to to the place where we were staying and he brought it out and we had to put that on a 30 second exposure and i had to stand there like that for 30 seconds oh, right. in order to get all of the lights and filters in. Um, so yeah, Dev, also when I saw the photo, I also was like, you have to send this to me now. Like I need it now. Like immediately. Uh, I'm, also, I'm also a huge nature fan too. It's gorgeous. I, I love nature too. So it's, yeah. it, 
for me to be able to accompany that and then to also put it out on social media so that it, it's definitely part of my personality so it was great to to be able to capture that moment um and this i love this you have a bunch of photos that actually uh that are this view on a say um of you at a dj booth yeah. clearly um do you remember this specific photo because of me they are a couple do you remember the set do. do you remember do. this this, club, this I was actually say. last week yeah uh, a very 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 recent photo um this was taken by one of my really good friends his name is john and he also again impromptu just uh he just brought his camera to one of my gigs and this is at the texas bar where i started djing too and i dj there about mm. two to three times a week so um you can you can see the focus you can definitely see the focus and uh <laughs> zoned in man <laughs> every dj will be able to tell you you will very very rarely find a photo where dj is actually looking up unless a photographer says hey look here uh because we're, we're sort of like this yeah. is me and i'm here right now yeah i want to move on to the section i like to call let this astronaut see your collection of three for all the listeners out there, each guest will get a chance to show us three things from their personal collection that brings them joy or inspiration. So, Kina, the floor is yours. Please show us your collection of three. Okay, so I, I, uh, I have two material things. Um, the third one isn't really material, but I think every musician would relate or anyone that um, loves nature would relate. <clears throat> I know it's not an NFT. Um, so damn, <laughs> <laughs> should have been. It would have been. It would have been cool. Yeah. Um. So first thing, obviously, I couldn't have the interview without this. Ah. Uh, um, yeah. Which is obviously the drumstick, because it kind of started everything. Um. And I, I, I do keep it. Even I mean, yes, my drum set still stares at me uh, while I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and it haunts me in a way because why 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 are we not spending time anymore yeah um but the drumsticks are probably always always either on the bedside table or somewhere on my desk or something like that um and i think it just kind of reminds me where where this whole thing started and where i found my knack for music and type of thing and specifically this one because <clears throat> these are the drum set drumsticks that I use. So I did drumline for a while. Ooh. For those who don't know, drumline is like a marching band, but just drums. Um, and I was vice captain for a while at my school and everything like that. That's really cool. And, um, lots of fun, lots of fun. Uh, we covered like Kendrick Lamar and that type of thing. Oh. People had no idea. Oh, that's awesome! Um, <laughs> really jealous. But anyway, like 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 a, a Black Skinhead by Kanye West. Great song yeah. if you know the song. Uh, we did that too. It was really fun. But anyway, so if as a drummer, what you do is you you tape up your sticks if you play on the rim of the drum mm -hmm. a lot because it's obviously metal, and then sticks break, so you don't want to break the sticks. Um, so uh, it also is reminiscent of that time as well. And uh, if you want to get all poetic about it, um, sometimes the drumstick breaks inside the tape, but obviously the tape holds it together. And that just goes into sort of things happening on the inside. But, uh, you know, keeping it together and holding it together is the, what, what should be permanent. A metaphorical a little yeah. element right yeah. there. Just before I you... I told you poetry. <laughs> poetry is part of your life, man. I mean, you see that everywhere, eh? right? <laughs> but um, just a, a side question. Are you one of those drummers that still phantom drum without realizing it? Um, a lot of like long term, long term drummers. Most drummers are long term, but you know, mm -hmm. you'll find yourself drumming with spoons or your fingers or pencils oh, and yeah, everything yeah. Yeah. everywhere. I still, I, I still DJ and I'm up on stage and I'm busy doing this like it's in the high hat yeah. type of thing. I'm doing this while I'm DJ. With you. And people are like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Just leave me. It's my creative process." I mean, I'm just so, doing something right here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yes, I definitely do. <laughs> okay, you say you have two material things, right? Yes, so so I have the second one here. I'm gonna have to move back a bit because it's, it's it's a bit large. It's the floor shows, so like again, I said. Again, uh, it's a musical instrument, but this. No way! Don't say you play the trumpet. I don't. Oh damn it! I, try, I tried it out. I tried it out, um, but I'm holding it wrong. Um, I did try it out, but uh, it wasn't for me. Um, the reason why this specifically this is also always on the the mantelpiece or whatever you want to call it so this is my dad's trumpet uh -huh. um and i actually celebrated my dad's 60th the other day with him 
Um, and he used this while he was in high school oh. to play the, the national anthem and stuff like that. So it's very, very old. It's definitely not in working condition, not even close. Um, we tried, but it just, no. Um, reason being because we spoke about uh, music influences and hearing that through your music. So I have a funny story regarding that. I did drama, as I said, and I started probably when I was about six or seven. And I'd go do like little um, auditions for advertisements or short films or whatever. And I remember, um, it, like, like the movie Inside Out, I like to call them cold memories. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We were brought into the interview room, and normally it's like one by one, but this time they wanted all 10 of us little seven, year, eight year olds um, standing there on the line. And then they basically, they're just sitting there with the whole film crew. And there's one guy at the front, the, obviously the director. And he said, um, just go down the line and just tell us, you know, what music you listen to. And I was probably about eight or seven or eight, around about that age at this point. So it starts going down. And this is now, this is now 2008 and Maroon 5 and uh, Madonna was making a comeback and Lady Gaga and, and whatever. And it go, goes down the hole and Jason Derulo and Justin Bieber and all of those type of things. And then they get to me. And I look up at this group of 30 to 40 year old dudes operators, <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, 80s music. And he's like, what? And I was like, 80s music. I'm like, oh, this and kid. Like, Dude, you're eight. I'm like, I know. But, but, but 80s music. And he's like, what 80s music? And I was like, well, Michael Jackson, Billy Joel, Rick Ashley, Eric Clapton. Um, and I just started going down the whole the list, list of like the legendary 80s artists. And the whole film crew was on the floor. Like they stopped recording. They just, they fell down and they were like, we can't believe this little kid. This um, kid. <laughs> and I was so upset because I obviously didn't get the part. I didn't get the part because obviously they wanted people who knew nowadays music. And I was so upset about it. <laughs> um, but basically where, <laughs> where that comes from is um, my dad loves to cook. So whenever he's in the kitchen and he's, and he's busy making dinner or lunch or whatever, there was always music playing in the house. Um, and then, and my mom would regularly come in and, Hey, listen, just, just turn it down a little bit. And be like, no, but then, we're rocking um, out, man. <laughs> so I, <laughs> Get out, mom. I, uh, I grew up, <laughs> basically, I grew up on people like Stevie Ray Vaughan and, um, Toto and oh. Earth, Wind and Fire and, um, very groovy type of music. So no wonder I got into the rhythmic techno house scene. And I remember listening back to back to uh, Earth, Wind and Fire's albums and um, Michael Jackson's all the classics. Had all the yeah. old CDs back then, and tapes even. Um, and I really feel like it has definitely gotten me to where I am. Um, I th the reason being because every every song that you listen to, I think there's a remnants of music that you started listening to obviously the music that you start listening to as a kid i don't think we realize it but um house music is basically disco music yeah you think about it yeah and it's such an influence r&b &B comes from a, a mash up of hip-hop and in my opinion slow rock um bruno mars for example is now doing proper funk music um and yeah i think that uh i think that it has definitely resonated with me and i like to take uh, the trumpets and um, all of those type of things I like to incorporate in my music and it's like a subconscious thing. So having an old instrument with me or by me always reminds you like where I come from and to always look for something different and to find influence within myself with music that I want to do or want to play. And stick then to your roots. that as a vessel. Yeah, yeah. stick to the um, roots. Uh, I do think that music is sort of regurgitated in a way, very ugly word, but it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, because as we said, there's only 12 notes. So you can see it in so many different ways. And I think the different ways that I saw it as a kid helps me to see them in even more different ways while remembering those ways too. So and yeah. obviously really shaped the type of music that you listen to and create. I mean, geez, eh? yeah. a little eight year, eight year old going on 80 year old, hey, eh? right? With your mm -hmm. music choices. And yeah. then Billy Joel, what? <laughs> Billy Joel, eight year old kid that listens to Billy Joel, come on, man. <laughs> That's really cool. I can really relate to that. I had a, a similar upbringing with my dad mm. as well. And I'd be like, I 
rock, rock up at school with my Pink Floyd and then they teach like what demon child has been released oh, upon us. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> so like that little grade four kid is rocking out to Nirvana and everything. Um, yeah. And a virtual collective? Not, not, not virtual. Uh, oh. Okay, it, it is a physical thing, but if any of us touched us, we would, uh, any of us touched it, it definitely uh, would, it would burn us. So basically... Ooh, this just got uh, you... <laughs> riveting. <laughs> what is he going to whip out now? <laughs> I, 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 I don't have it here because it's... The... Anyway, you said I could be weird, so I'm going to... <laughs> um, You're going to take that so... literally. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my DJ logo is basically comes from a minimalist sunset. Um, and I got that from this. So I have a tattoo of like a minimal sunset. Oh, bring that and, up close to the camera um, again. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I don't think the light's great. And you can't see the proper detailing. Ah, but, damn um, it. Ba basically, um, well, you can go look at the logo. It's the same thing. So I, I did get the tattoo before I got the logo. So I'm not that in love with myself. <laughs> but I've made the logo and then like I'm going to put it on my body. Good to know. Good to um, know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get, I get that a lot. So I just had to clarify. Um, so the reason being is because I love sunsets. So my third thing that inspires me is the sunset, basically. Because um, helps me find beauty in everything. And we, we've spoken about, you know, what, what inspires you when you're DJing um, or what, what gets you out of a bad mood. And with, with my whole triple third of mental disorders, that's the one thing that has kind of kept me going is just, just taking a breath, just standing outside and just having a look at either the sunset or nature in general. Um, and my favorite sets have always been sunset sets. And the nice thing is when the sun goes down, that's when my work starts. And that's when I, when I can do what I love doing every day. Um, so I know it's a bit weird and I know it's not, it's not, uh, and uh, what's the word? It's not, it's not by the book, but it definitely, I, I couldn't not mention just nature and appreciating everything and seeing things for the beauty that they have inside them, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it stays very true to who you are as a person, it seems with, um, how you find poetry and everything. I know we were uh, joking around about that the entire time, but you do, you, you do really find the poetry and the law things, it seems. I try to. Which is good. I mean, that that's a good way to live life if you're going to do it in any way possible, if you have to have a life mantra or life motto, yeah. whatever. And that's very interesting. And I would accept that collection as three years being a <laughs> legitimate collection, collectibles, if you will. Even though we can't touch it, it's fine. We can't touch it, but I was gonna. I thought you could have whipped like a uranium cube or something. That would have like, been cool. I should have. Like, this, this inspires <laughs> me because it it's radioactive. It, it can destroy. <laughs> yeah, it no, creates anyway. power and everything. Yeah. But no, yeah. That, that's really and that, it's good that you actually mentioned. It was um, I was wondering about your logo, where that where you drew inspiration from? Is it just a random thing? Did you actually no. like? Is there the rhyme or reason about it and everything? So. Thank you for sharing with us. But Kenna, you know, I want to thank you for co-piloting this rocket ship today. Before we check our engines, I want to give you a chance to shout out any platforms or projects before we go. Remember to follow us in the Stella Sound Discord community or head on over to Instagram for the latest Stella updates. Kenna, you know, which platforms from yourself would you like to shout out? Um well at the moment uh, you can find all my mixes and my sets on SoundCloud. Uh, the handle is very simple, just Kindrum. And then on YouTube, you can find one of them. And they probably for the next few weeks, there's going to be one coming out almost every week. So stay tuned and then you'll hear some more. I am also a little bit of a sneak peek. I am also planning to release my next signal, uh, signal single, <laughs> um, first single actually, um, soon. I'm not going to tell you when, but soon. Ooh. So. So then it'll be on everything. I'm talking Apple Music, TikTok, um, uh, radio, uh, your neighbor's radio, <laughs> I do it everywhere. The taxi's driving past, everything. So we are going to watch this space for all the latest updates from uh, Kino. And as you say, Kendra, we will link the, all the social handles in the description down below. 
But listeners and fellow astronauts out there, from me, Leon Repulsen, and my guest, Kina, we want to thank you for joining us here at the Stellar Sun podcast. But the countdown has begun, and it's time to blast off into the stellar sphere. Until we meet again at the next Stellar Magellan.